just watch that program. You're on. Okay. Well, good evening. I'd like to call to order the Georgetown School Committee Thursday, March 14th, 2013 uh, meeting. First on the agenda is consent agenda. We have approval of minutes, public hearing minutes, 3-7-13, March 7th, 2013. We have regular session minutes, March 7th, 2013. Uh, we have acceptance of warrants, 3 7 Five thirteen three six P thirteen, and so do I hear a motion to approve the minutes for public hearing minutes three seven thirteen. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And do I hear a motion to approve the regular session minutes of? Is that two three regular session minutes of three yes. seven thirteen? So moved. Second. Any discussion? No discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Passes. And then acceptance of warrants. 37513 and 36 P 13. Do I hear a motion to accept those warrants? So moved. <coughs> Second. Any discussion? No discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, communications? I don't think there is no. any communications. No. Okay. And right on cue. Hi. Cole. <laughs> Good evening. Hey, um, well, um, it's only been a week since I saw you, but I feel like a lot's <laughs> happened. I know um, everyone's getting used to the time change at school, mm -hmm. which I definitely had to get used to. And um, But we also had the NHS induction ceremony, which was... Um, Great. It was a great, it was a great ceremony. So many, so many students were accepted. It was great. Yeah. Very, very talented. And um, it was good. A so National any, Honor Society, mm -hmm. NHS. Yes. Is it just yeah. seniors who are inducted or juniors? No, it's and juniors and seniors can be inducted. There were 29 new people. And mm -hmm. actually, in your next packet, I am including the um, brochure for the evening or the program for the evening. Oh, okay. And you can get a little more information on exactly who was inducted. Mm -hmm. And then spring sports start next week, next Monday, mm -hmm. so I will be doing track. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, there's no co-op um, with Ipswich anymore. Only people who had run previously can be part of that. So we're going to have right. to find a new co-op. It's mm -hmm. just a change in the M I M. Is it M I A A? Yeah. So I mean, you know, you just take it as is. Mm -hmm. So, so, so what does that mean? You have to find another school to join. Mm -hmm. Well, that would be one option, right? If yeah. there's another school that doesn't have enough kids to run a program. Exactly, because since the switch is able to, right. um, you know, run a program without us, we we're not allowed to join the co-op anymore. They just changed the ruling in that because mm -hmm. they they thought that was unfair, having it's just giving them an advantage. But um, so we're gonna have to find another school that doesn't have enough kids on their own to you know sustain themselves. And um, which is, I think, we'd be able to find some because, so. yeah. I hope you can. Yeah. I mean, I what happens? So, yeah. What happens if they don't find? If you don't, we find just can't the school, run the program. You can't run the the, mm -hmm. the track program. Yeah, is that what it is. I know we Did have. Did you say Cole track. that you it, do? You, are you still able? To yes. Be grandfathered. Yeah. That was the same thing with golf when when we couldn't mm -hmm. have a co-op any longer with for go, for golf. Um, a couple, our golfers were still allowed to try out, but they had to make the team. Sure. But mm -hmm. they were still two of our seniors did. Yeah, and then they did very well on the too. golf team. Mm -hmm. so, so I think that's a transition that they Yeah, they yeah, it's just a transition okay. phase, which is it's nice for me not to have to go to another school right, right away. As a so, senior. Yeah, as a senior, too. So um, no, I appreciate the leniency on that, too. Mm -hmm. But um, I just hope that the incoming freshmen and following years can actually find a co-op because it's a great sport. I really like doing track. Great sport. So, what do you what what events do you do? I do the four hundred hurdles and the eight hundred. So, oh, okay. eight hundred. That's a tough race. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I like it though. <laughs> <laughs> so, and um, and then you know all the other sports are starting up, which is it's going to be interesting. Um, I like uh, lacrosse, all the other sports and everything that go along with that. And um, I know baseball, I know they lost a lot of people last year, but. Mm -hmm. Some seniors they lost. I know. So. It's okay. They're, they're excited to be coming back mm -hmm. as state champs. Rebuilding. Yes. yes. Yep. <laughs> Maybe I should have said that. All right. Okay. Well, well thank you. You're welcome. Thanks very much. 
Uh, let's see. Audience, is there anyone in the audience with uh, public comment? What was that? Oh, okay. Um, they agree with everything. <laughs> right. Let's see. Um, administrative reports. Yes. I, I actually, I want to just add one little thing. I mentioned it in the last set of orange notes, but she wasn't here. So I want to recognize uh, Donna Strait in earning her doctorate degree, which is no right. small oh, feat. So we now have Dr. Strait. So that's a, it's a that's great really cool. accomplishment for her, and we're very you know, proud to, to have her have that credential and uh, be on our team. Um, but I did I did mention it to them last time, Don, I was going to, and then you weren't at the meeting. So I, I didn't want to miss another meeting without acknowledging it. So congratulations to you. Okay, and then I guess we can move on now, Rob, to school reports. All right, so for school reports, we have up the middle school after school program. Principal Gill. Come up. Hi, Brian. Hello, yeah. Good evening, Brian. Good evening. Well, I'm sitting before you tonight hoping to get an approval for a proposal that we're presenting for an after-school enrichment program. Now, last year we did a fairly extensive parent-student survey seeking input on programs that people would like to see after school. And we've been working on trying to develop a consensus on what teachers will be interested in, correlating with what they thought students would be interested in. So we came up with a proposal, and many thanks to Deb DeFruccio, who is a social studies teacher in, in the seventh grade. She was instrumental in developing this proposal. Um, she does a great deal of work at the Pearly Pearly. now. She runs the Pearly. She has, she has an extensive experience, and, and she did a tremendous job pulling this together. So I want to thank her. Um, and I can do one of two things. I can give you kind of a brief presentation. I know you have it in front of you, uh, if that will be helpful to the audience at home. Or I can just uh, answer questions or do both. Sure. So just in summary, what we decided to do, we have a lot of things going on this spring, including the middle school play. And with so many kids are involved, we wanted to, um, you know, be respectful of that and also not take from our own pot of kids, you know, so we're waiting until after the play. After. Right. So we're going to um, establish our first session ever uh, from April 22nd to May 24th, if it's approved. And there'll be a course fee of $40 per student, and that covers a five-week session. And we have several different things on the agenda, and I'll just run through the calendar real quickly. On Mondays, we'll have homework zone and yoga. Tuesdays will also be homework zone, and there'll be um, Mr. Lapome will be pulling together students to create a Royal Review newspaper. And on Wednesday we will have homework zone again, and Mrs. Dodge will be teaching A is for animation, which is creating different forms of animation using the Graphics Mac Lab. On Thursdays they will have recycle, renew, and create, which they will be taking discarded materials and trash and turning them into art. Um, it's very cost effective. Right. <laughs> Recycle, renew, and create. Yes. And digital photography and Photoshop as well. And then on Fridays, we will continue the drama program with Ms. Donovan. Um, on page two, <clears throat> we've also developed a registration form with a deadline for April 5th. Um, and we're asking people to just write the checks out to the town of Georgetown. Mm -hmm to the middle school enrichment program, and they can be dropped off at the middle school office, or at the main office. We are hoping to have a large crowd that remains with us until the summertime. Sounds like a great opportunity. So would you, would you um, so this is a pilot? So it's a pilot, right? correct. So you'd like to expand it, that's how we did it the other the elementary schools we started, small. And then we. There wouldn't be time for a second session, would there? No. On May 12th? No. Yeah, I didn't think no. so. No. Yeah. That's why we thought one session, yeah. see how it goes. Yeah. It should be a real good litmus test, you know, mm -hmm. because there's not a whole lot going on um, once the play winds down. So. Okay. Um, and we didn't want to bury people with too many programs so that they were mm -hmm. kind of sprinkled thin all the way around. We wanted to just do a test with the ones that seemed to be most popular. Okay. 
So if, so if it should that, be self-sustaining as well. Yes, I yes. So <clears throat> would, would students have a chance to suggest after-school activities as things? Not, obviously not for this pilot session, but going forward. Yes, actually, that's how this was developed initially. We set up, um, we set up on the bulletin board out in front of the main hallway, um, a suggestion board, oh, and okay. students mm -hmm. filled out, and we had, Excellent. we wound up with sixteen or seventeen different um, ideas for after school classes and we did it based on sign ups. Kids went and signed up and oh, okay. um so that's how we determine the popularity of what will fly. But certainly they'd be involved. We'll continue to survey people and see if there were a lot of great ideas that didn't make it the first round. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So we're gonna represent those and um and see if anyone comes up with anything else as well. Right. Excellent. That sounds like a great idea. I know my sister would love to do something like mm -hmm. that, and she's in sixth grade. Yeah. So, and maybe at some point you can also integrate like an intramural program and seasons when you don't have the the demands on the gym, right. because I know the gym space is very limited. But you know there could be a and I mean I see when the kids have a chance to play some of those you know volleyball <coughs> and those kind of things. I mean they tend to love to join that floor hockey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's a real trend now to to keep especially middle school kids involved because a lot of their programs, their sports programs, are antiquated. Right. Right. Um, a lot of and... town programs and travel teams have taken over, and the mm -hmm. cost is prohibitive to travel to nine different middle schools in a year yeah. as well. So, intramurals have the potential to really. Yeah, that. What's nice right. about intramurals is they draw students who don't necessarily go on the travel teams mm -hmm. or, That's right. or the select right. teams, and and they everybody still fun. gets a chance to play. They just like to play. Yeah. they just, just like to play. Just want to have fun. You know? Exactly. I think it's great. Yes. yes, that's a great idea. Yeah, and outdoor fitness. I mean, there's a lot of options mm -hmm. that could tie into our wellness mm -hmm. policy, and so it's just important to get it started. Exactly. Yes. We want to get the word out. We, we did try, as I said in the orange <clears throat> notes, Nora Cannon put together, you know, a, a first draft. She called it the middle ground, which I thought was an excellent title. And, um, you know, I don't know what the reasons were, but we just weren't able to, to draw the interest. But we do have a lot of students who go to the library now, and I'd love to see those students maybe choose to participate in this program. and you know, be in, engaged and involved in this. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. But I don't think we should give up on it. I think uh, the data is very clear that middle level students are the most at risk mm -hmm. when they leave school for the day. There's, you know, because they're in that in, be that in between stage. Mm -hmm. So if we can make this work, I think it's a great idea. And as a parent myself of two middle schoolers, I would love to see Homework Zone take off because it takes so yeah. much of the stress level off at home. <laughs> you don't have a whole say, lot yeah, of time when you get home between be dinner helpful. and showers and, you know, and then you're fighting over homework. And, and yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't not know us, but, you know. Students are going to want to sign up for the Homework Zone, but I think maybe initially a lot of, you know, parents, parents and might want well, to. And, you know, we but thought it, about that. It needs to be fun so that the, you know the, right. the child will sign up and then and we say, took that oh, into consideration we didn't want the parents just signing the children up to say yes you're definitely going because then it becomes a punishment you know we want right. it to be fun and, right. and, and to make it interesting you know will there be a snack or something provided yeah, by you? that's what it says we'll oh it does yeah. Yeah. That? Okay. No. Yep. yeah i missed that part thank you yeah. and then hopefully the kids will will get the idea they get home and their homework is all mm. finished and then yes. they'll learn well, to enjoy huge stress that relief. as opposed to you know putting it off and off and off until right yeah. yeah. Well, it's also good for parents, too, who maybe can't come until 3 o'clock, mm -hmm. 4 o'clock. Mm -hmm. So the kids wait at school mm -hmm. for their parents to pick them up. So, um, you know, they'd actually be able to do something instead of just sitting around yeah, and waiting. And point. it's nice with totally. the, not to focus on the homework zone, but to have qualified staff members working with yes. the students who know the material and know the content and know the teaching strategies. Mm -hmm. It's it's much clearer, the message. It doesn't get confused as it sometimes can when we all sit home and say, I don't remember doing math this way, you know. Right, right. So I think <clears throat> that a student on a Monday, for example, they would have to choose either to sign up for the homework zone or yoga. There's right. not a way they can do both, right? You know, some I don't think so because they're both at the same time. So right. they're both 220 to 340. Right. I mean, if it takes off enough, I'm sure we could look at double well, sessions. That might, well, that, but, and that might be something to think about. You know, I, I know there are some after-school programs where everybody goes and does homework for the first 20 minutes, and right. then, the, then they go to the activity, so they're exactly. not in a position of, of but, choosing That's that. how a lot of the 21st century programs run. Yes, that's where I'm getting my yeah. information because I'm more But this enough. homework zone, could do you pick either Monday, Tuesday, 
Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, or is it? It's not all three days. You could sign up for all you three. Could you could sign up for all three up. if you like. But so you could do yoga on Monday and homework zone on Tuesday. That's right. Certainly could. Mm -hmm. and, you could go every day if you wanted. And it's forty. Or, and, it's forty dollars though a class. For every for each, day. Class. For each session, yeah. For each section. For each session. Right. So this little calendar, I think, is a little confusing. Mm -hmm. But you know, when you you just look at this. Because it looks without, like session one and two. Yeah, it's if you. So currently, because I get these for. You know, a Pembroke student, and I got them for Pearlie. She'd pick the one she wanted. I'd look at the date. I'd know it was on Thursday. I knew all of them were from two twenty to three forty or whatever time it is um, there. And if the, you know, if there was one on Monday that she wanted and one on Tuesday, she would say, "I want to go to the one on Monday and the one on Tuesday." That I, I just think this kind of makes that. I think it's a little difficult to read. Yeah, that it because <clears throat> you don't know. Well, maybe you could look at the Yeah, because we haven't sent it out yet, so yeah. certainly we can I, we I can just, revisit that before we send it out. But what I'm just trying to so if I say I want my child to go for this session one, this this April twenty sixth to May twenty, and I want them to go on Monday, so they I would plan on them going yeah. every Monday and it, for five weeks, and it would cost me forty dollars. Yeah. Correct. And if I don't, if they go three out of the five weeks, it's still, still forty dollars. Forty dollars. Okay. Yep. All right. And I guess with the homework zone, you could sign up, you could say sign up for Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, or sign up for all three, but you pay for, yeah. Yeah, so you pay for each block as a separate yeah. payment. Hmm. Okay. Now, was there, the what is the reason that there's no homework zone on Thursday? Just um, based purely on scheduling? And, probably, yeah, I, okay. I, didn't, I didn't really ask that question, so I was happy it was three days a week. <laughs> Maybe there's just not, a, it's like not enough yeah. students would sign up. Or but it could just be a pilot. Too, yeah, the um, that the activities. Maybe someone's not available to do them on that's Fridays. Maybe it. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's right. Thinking. Well, I can imagine also students might want to choose the date. Are these teachers at the middle school now, so yes. students know them? Yes. They might want to know which date. Like if one of them is teaching on Monday, one on Tuesday, one on Wednesday, they might. They want to know the teacher. They yeah. want to know who the teacher is, right? <laughs> For the the only one who's not is um, the yoga instructor. Doesn't, is yeah. not a right. school teacher. But I'm assuming one of these instructors <clears throat> is doing the Monday. Oh, oh I see One of them is doing, doing yeah. Tuesday and one of them is doing Wednesday. And I don't know. My middle school self probably would have said, I'll pick this one. I want well, this teacher, teacher what day? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and well, then that, I probably would have gone to the you teacher and that. said, what day are you doing? <laughs> yeah, I'll follow up with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, great question. And the principal might just switch them and rotate them just to throw everybody. <laughs> just out. to throw everybody out. <laughs> there, am I, is there no journalism program at the middle school right now or the high school? Is there a journalism program? No. Do we have a journalism program? Not at the middle program? school. Well, we have a we, high we have school. A, we have a journalism class. Uh -huh. We do it a little differently than most high schools. We do it as part of a class. So a lot of school newspapers produced by the class. Okay. Mm -hmm. Blueprint. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just thought, wow, five weeks you're going to produce a newspaper. I know. <laughs> mm -hmm. And the and the and Justin Lapomi, I have complete faith in him. He's a awesome. he's a worker bee and he's excellent. Mm -hmm. So I have no doubt he'll pull something great off. Okay. With that. okay. Um, so do we have a motion to approve the middle school enrichment program as presented? So moved. Second. Any discussion? No discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thank Brian. Thank you. I will keep you updated once we get rolling. All right. That's great. Great. Have fun. Good. Next up, uh, let's see. <laughs> Dr. Tana Strait. The Don Strait, yeah. <laughs> does that sound? Does that sound good? Sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> After four years of hard work. <laughs> First time I saw it in writing, I was like. Wow. <laughs> well, it's nice to be here. I wanted to come and just kind of talk about the extended school year. And extended school year is for <coughs> students with special education who have individual education plans, although not for all students. It's for those students who will have substantial regression with regard to the goals that they have in their individual education plans. So it's really a small subset of those students that we have in special education. 
So it's going to run a little bit differently this year, so I wanted to come and share it. Some of the things that are going to be similar are the times and dates and length of it. So it'll run for six weeks in the summer. Uh, most of the programs will run Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday for three hours. Uh, the instructional programs will run for Tuesdays and Thursdays. And the students that have very specific reading programs that they'll have substantial regression or other types of remedial programs like that will be scheduled into those programs so that we can continue to meet those students' needs, as well as some occasional therapeutic programs that a student might need, speech and language, OTPT, something like that. So we're going to look at addressing those needs as well. So in the programs that we're going to have, we're looking at uh, several preschool programs. One is considered um, a preschool program where we're having the young students come who are ages so three to about five years old. We're looking at integrating some typically developing peers or children that are their age that the parents might decide that they'd like to have them come and integrate with those students during the uh, three days of the summer school for the six weeks. There's an intensive program as well that's being offered and that's for students that have significant needs that need a lot of discrete trials or other types of activities, a lot of therapeutic services that wouldn't necessarily have those same age peers integrated within them. Additionally, and this would be at all three levels, we have what is going to be the social pragmatics program, and that's for those students that are might be on the autism spectrum disorder, have some developmental delays, but have some um, needs for applied behavior analysis and other areas that we need to keep those programs going for them. That'll be at all three levels, um, as well as the therapy program for those students and the instructional skills as well. It'll take place um, in two of the schools. Pearly will house the pre-K students through the grade five students, and then the middle high school will have the middle high school students. So if you take a look in um, working this out and looking at the staffing requirements, um, which I worked with Kim Leonard and Eileen Lee, who are the special education coordinators for the secondary and elementary levels. If you look at the second sheet with the larger print, that is really the one on the back is the one that you want to look at, um, at the third oh. sheet. So in looking at the two programs, what we're going to need overall is a director, and that director will effectively be in charge in ensuring that the programs are running smoothly, that the teachers are all there if we need substitutes, that the curriculum is appropriate, um, generally overseeing the entire program at the two schools. We're looking at um, physical therapists, CODAs, nurses, speech and language pathologists, you know, to keep up those types of therapies as well as you can see the breakdown of um, what our estimated staffing needs are with regard to the types of teachers that we're going to need as well as the types of tutors and program aides to meet the students needs and again i just want to um, emphasize that this is an estimated cost because like as you know very well with special education it's a day-to-day -day process as to who we have in district, what the students' needs are, and what the costs might be associated with that. Uh, another piece to note is the parent tuition. We're anticipating having um, approximately 19 students at the elementary level whose parents will tuition them in to be part of that program. And that would be a revenue which would be applied to the cost of the summer school for those students. There's materials that we'll need as well as transportation. So you can see what the, again, the estimated total cost will be on this sheet. <coughs> funding source, Donna? Pardon me? Funding <coughs> source. The funding source is through um, the <coughs> IDEA grant. We're looking at funding the program. So there is and no budget impact to okay. this? Correct. How, how so. long does that grant last for? Oh, wait, we get it every year. Every it's, a, year it's, it's, a federal, it's a federal entitlement grant. So, so it's based it's, on a formula. And it would, it, it's enough to cover this cost, this protected mm -hmm. cost? More than enough. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. That's great. So we utilize that grant for a variety of um, services that are required by students over the course of the year. One of them is the extended school year program okay. that we're looking at. So it at. really just applies to services in special ed throughout the mm -hmm. school year. Yeah. When we talked about um, 
the Medicaid, the, the, the uh -huh. improvements we made to the Medicaid, this is one of the grants where we, remember we said that we removed something from the grant that didn't qualify and didn't help make us Medicaid eligible. So this is an example of that's okay. the grant that we did that with. Great. Mm -hmm. What is the position CODA? A CODA is um, part of an occupational therapist where they come in and do fine motor skills with students. They're not fully, they're certified, Certain. but they're not a full What does it stand for? C-O-T-A. Uh, certified, certified Occupational, occupational therapist, therapist Assistant. Assistant, got it. And so, a physical therapist where it's some of the gross motor activities. So for those parents who want to tuition their children in, those 19 children, mm -hmm. what would the, the day look like for those children, those students? Well, it would look like a typical preschool program right now. The way the preschool is running, we have students who are tuitioned in as well, and they run through the typical preschool program. So there's going to be um, play activities, there's going to be some academics. There's going to be some songs and art and music and all the <coughs> typical things that you would see in a child's preschool. Okay. And those children, if they needed discrete, oh, no, not those, those special ed children would still get their discrete trials and their special therapies. Right. But right. It, would, it would be just really like our pearly classrooms right it now. It would mm -hmm. be essentially like a, a preschool in the mm -hmm. summer. Exactly. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. So it's a nice opportunity to extend that um, for children to kind of keep them going with their peers that they're with now and for parents to have a place to bring their kids so that they have that fun time. Right. right. I, I do anticipate that there may be a few parents that might wonder why the Pembroke kids are coming to Pearlie mm -hmm. and why the Pembroke kids aren't at Pembroke. So maybe you could speak to that because I do think there may be some questions about that. Okay, sure. And. Um, Looking at what the needs of the students were, we decided that they would be most effectively met if we kept the students together in one elementary level where we could provide the students with their explicit instruction that they're needed, um, keeping all of their specialists and all the services right there. So the idea behind it was to keep the children together and ensure that they're receiving those very specific um, instruction that they need. Mm -hmm. And also, wasn't there some advantage to maximizing the resources? Well, like, there is, exactly. Keeping everybody in the same building is maximizing the resources. So you're looking at the speech and language, the nurse, the code of the physical therapist. They're all under one roof. They're all together. So, so that allows you to provide a more highly targeted, highly kind of customized to the student's particular individual needs. And cost right? effective. Yes. 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 Yep. All of those pieces. Yes. Exactly. As far as temperature is concerned how does that building work in the summer well we have had and we in the, in one of the rooms at least we have an air conditioner right margaret yes. mm -hmm. yeah it's a portable air conditioner but i would you say that we're only going how many classrooms are we going to need down a three right Do you have what you three need? for the younger students and one, so four all four all together so the question is are i mean obviously the summer can be hot and we don't know what the summer is going to bring mm -hmm. but are we worried at all about the temperature? We live in New England, typically morning school. Children will come in, and if those classrooms are, you know, it's going to get hot later on in the day, but children are coming at 8.30 in the morning, so I would imagine that it's going to be relatively cool, and then they leave by 11.30. So, uh, yeah, I would imagine Pearlie might be a little cooler than Pembroke. Just given the roof mm -hmm. situation, the maybe. I mean, we, we mm -hmm. definitely would run fans and all that. Donna, was there an issue last year? Other than there were certain students who needed to be mm -hmm. because of their IEPs and their their health issues, they needed to be in an air conditioned room. And so those students had we a, modified for that. We uh, ensured that they had that environment that they needed for their safety. But were, so there we're were other there were other groups that were meeting though in other classrooms that did mm -hmm. not have air conditioning. Right? Was there a problem? Yeah. I think it's going to be okay because it is mornings only. It's not, it's not a full right. day program. And then obviously, you know, you can do things like go outside, take the water table, and you know, I'm sure they they would do some. Hands. Yeah. And we specifically pick the 8:30 to 11:30 in consideration of the heat of the day. I've been in Pembroke when it's just been stultifying. I mean, absolutely, <laughs> and, and this is in May, mm -hmm. and I don't recall that experience in Pearlie. Mm -hmm. So. Hopefully it'll Let's be. hope it's a cool summer. It'll be nice. Be when the program's running. Otherwise, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay.
Thank you. Um, let's see. So we have for that motion. We have a motion. Do I hear a motion to approve the extended school year programs as presented by Dr. Strait? So moved. Second. Second. And any discussion? <laughs> no discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Great. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Donald. Thank you. And now we have the high school mid year school improvement plan. Hello, Peter. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. Joining you over here again. <laughs> can you all get me? I can move over. Move Are you sure? Because yeah. you're, you're going to come over here. Okay. Is it thinking? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'd like to um, present my mid-year cycle. Can you see, Peter? Yeah. <laughs> it's a little darker than I thought. There you go. Thank you. Um, I'll briefly just go over um, the goals and uh, where, we are, where we are with them and what we're doing to ensure um, that we succeed in those goals and then we'll look at our high need subgroup. Uh, the first goal is to promote the integration of current technologies and enhance student learning through portable technologies. The major thrust there was changing our electronic device policy to allow That's why smartphones in for instructional use only in class at teacher's discretion. And uh, we get a lot of positive feedback from students on that. And we also <laughs> polled the teachers. And it looks like about 41% uh, of the teachers use, uh, have students use their smartphones at least once a week. And um, that's the good news. On the other uh, side of that, about half of the teachers don't re use that at all. So um, we hope to um, find... Uh, uh, m more ways to motivate teachers to use them by um, sharing uh, best practices and uh, best ideas about how they can be used in a classroom <coughs> setting. Um, more good news is that the teachers that are using them ha happen to be in the four academic, core academic areas You have the highest use, so English, Math, Science, and Social Studies. Um, uh, uh, catching on to this and uh, uh, things to still do is that um, from a district perspective we need to update our uh, acceptable use policy our internet uh, acceptable use policy um, we have a committee in the high school uh, chaired by uh, Liz Marchetti um, who comes from Burlington High School, which is kind of a pioneer yes. in technology in the state. So uh, she has a lot of experience from there, and she's really crafted uh, what I think is an excellent, acceptable use policy. But um, we're waiting to present that to you because we want to integrate it closely with our new mission statement, and that's still in the works. So when that is done, uh, a lot of things will start uh, moving along because so that's why I had it on the policy and the governance agenda but I was obviously right. ahead of the you know ahead of the track so well, I, when I thought I was going crazy like I couldn't remember why I put it on there I said to Peter did I am I like going crazy did I forget something and he alerted me that no well we were getting to the age where we might be slipping um, <laughs> that there was a logistical reason why I did it and we're just not ready to do more with it yet and, and I believe they had some issues in Burlington so I'm glad we've waited and we're going to learn from there experience and, and take the time to do it all yeah. right. <laughs> the second goal is to improve student performance on writing and open response questions. Um, we, this, this goal is generated from data, so uh, we're always looking at our MCAS data and our uh, greatest area of need in MCAS is our open response questions. And uh, we had a full day workshop, I, I think it was the first PD day we used um, 
and a trainer came in and, and uh, Julie DeRoach uh, spent a lot of time with the staff and worked on uh, all kinds of open response questions and strategies and um, she created a, uh, a guide for teachers on various types and how to use them and we're doing this uh, collaboratively at the department level and uh, through my classroom observations um, I'm seeing some uh, some movement in this area. We won't know for sure until um, MCAS results come out and, and see how we do and that will be probably our earliest results in the summer. So, But all indications right now look like we're moving in the right direction for improvement in those areas. The third goal was to provide common strategies and language across the curriculum to support language-based learners and deepen reading capacity. Um, <clears throat> we did some summer training for special educators and we actually started this last year when we had some people from Landmark come in and work with our standard level teachers and our special educators. We dedicated two faculty meetings to provide uh, language-based strategies to all high school teachers. Again, Landmark came in and did that and uh, through again through our supervision evaluation process we see a lot of these strategies being employed in the classroom by high school teachers and um, we're not going to stop there there are future plans to um, at the high school level to uh, further train grade 9 teachers starting in grade 9 and then building up but there are also plans to adopt um, some common strategies in learning uh, study skill strategies at the district level. Can you define language-based learners? What does that mean? That means um, that any, anybody that is having difficulty with, with the language, with reading and writing, and um, some people have specific speaking. Uh, disabilities and difficulties working in, in that way. And Processing. Dr. Language. Straight can help me. <laughs> 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 That's effectively what it is. So they have difficulties um, with the pragmatic semantics of language. It could okay. be the processing of it. So there's a, a variety of um, areas where the disabilities could occur. So. What we like to do is take a look at how can we provide instruction and assessment to meet those varying needs to sort of provide that scaffolding piece. So in other words, the term it, it means that they have some kind of a language-based disability? Yes. yes. Ma okay. Yes. Master yes. Di learning difference. Or difference. You know, but it, there's a lot of high, it, highly specific strategies yes. involved in language-based learning. It could be for teachers it could be processing. Use. They you know, it could be how do they take information mm -hmm. orally and be able to take notes. So you might teach them two column notes, a very simple note sure. taking taking thing. So that's what Pam's saying is you, you can teach whatever you, you know what the, the gap is, you can teach, teach a specific into strategy. A specific strategy to that gap. Okay. Yeah, because that's just that term language based learners, aren't we all language -based? Well yeah, and <laughs> I think there are a lot of students who don't have IEPs necessarily or don't qualify for IEPs right. that still have language based challenges. Absolutely. Um, sure. <laughs> they can access the general right. curriculum and make effective right. progress. They don't need any specially designed instruction necessarily. What Peter's Marvel. talking about is those students that for whatever reason Their have trouble come from the, the that's language. Right. That's okay. right. And, and they that, can benefit from these and strategies. And the whole idea of this is to give this to all students Absolutely. so right. the kids that need it the most aren't just getting it when it's time for their services that they're getting it all the time by all their teachers and reinforced right. yeah that's fabulous because it's probably beneficial, like and you said, to far more pe students than we would identify right. as needing exactly. absolutely exactly fabulous. okay uh, the last goal was to infuse a variety of formative assessment techniques in the instructional repertoire of teachers we uh, at the high school and throughout the district uh, firmly and strongly believe that assessment drives instruction so we're really working closely uh, with this with our teachers to um, give them a greater repertoire to meet to to reach students in in various ways um, so they can alter their instruction when they find out on the go that uh, what they're doing isn't getting uh, they're not getting the most bang for the buck so we had a full day uh, workshop um, actually we had one and a half um, the first workshop 
didn't go over like we, we hoped it would go over. Um, I think there was a disconnect between what we wanted and what the provider um, gave us. So we brought her back and uh, we clarified that, brought her back and brought her back for a half a day and it went very, very well. And uh, I see a lot of these different strategies being incorporated now when we think this is gonna really pay great dividends in student learning. Uh, that brings us to our high need subgroup. Um, data analysis shows our greatest areas of need are in mathematics and once again um, the areas of open response and number sense. So um, the math department are using uh, lots of strategies to, to um, tackle this. On long blocks time is being used to work on open response questions and strategies in particular. Teachers are working on numerous number sense drills, word problems and strategies on how to approach these questions. And there are special extra help sessions being given after school to identify first time MCAS takers and students on EPPs. Um, that's an educational proficiency plan. But so for students that don't score, you have to be um, proficient in math and English to graduate. And for students who, who take the MCAS at the sophomore year and don't reach proficiency on that test, then they're put on what we call an EPP, an Educational Proficiency Plan. And um, we, we tutor them, we do lots of things, uh, uh, we identify uh, strategies in the classes to try to get them to uh, achieve proficiency on proficiency tests that are given periodically. Um, if they don't do that, they're still on a path to uh, show improvement in this area by uh, completing and passing uh, grade 11 and 12 English and math classes. And if they do that, then they satisfy the state's um, proficiency requirement. So, but we, we want to get them off those plans as soon as uh, we can, so we require them to take the test and we help them with that. Um, also, based on item analysis in ELA Math and Science, uh, we, we're focusing with this group in the Learning Center. We provide direct small group instruction in MCAS prep strategies. We also provide small group instruction in long composition and open response when we write in the Learning Center. We provide one-to-one -one tutoring for MCAS support, and then we, there's, there's a grant that allows us to do academic tutoring for uh, students that we identify in need who score warning and needs improvement in ELA, math, and science. And that's it. Okay. Brian Lights. Oh, it's really dark in here. <laughs> I, I'm not sure if this is a question for you or for you, Carol, but. Um, is there anything in in uh, the program for um, uh, the uh, the advisors, the counselors, who for for continuing education, um, in addition to just the teachers? I know all the teachers, and I see what goes on with continuing ed. Um, oh, you mean for like pro professional development for the counselors yeah, in that group? Yeah. Do, do they fall into that too? Yeah. I mean, on professional development days, yeah. they have. Are they considered a teacher every time I hear teacher. Contractually, they are, but um, with the new educator evaluation system, they're actually going to have their own yep. uh, different rubric. Oh. Yeah, that that's been a, a real gap for years in the teacher in the process. Yeah. Because you know it's hard to evaluate a nurse or a therapist using the. The standards but they do give their teacher. own professional but development. That's your that's your question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they it's tend to on, on professional development days. They tend to to uh, pool their resources and work on things like curriculum uh, for kids. They get their own professional development a lot. With there's all kinds of conferences that they're always going to, and uh, stuff like that. They uh, recently the last uh, about year and a half we've really been focusing our high school counselors going to get training on the Naviance program. And, uh, and what is that? Naviance, Naviance pro is, a, is a program that a lot of high schools use. It's really um, geared for guidance counselors, and there's, there's different um, components of it. There's career inventory component. There's uh, 
it's like a database for all of the colleges that they apply it helps them with the college process uh, there's all kinds of college information and stuff maybe uh, have you uh, used yours account yeah yeah what it, it basically just helps us um, organize which colleges we go to in a list and it helps facilitate the guidance department with like if we had done our common app like um, what we need from them would go through Naviance to the common app mm -hmm. so they would put everything on Naviance and it just works really well with the system that we have because when we use Common App, we get to apply to all of our colleges. I mean, mostly. Mm -hmm. Most of the colleges are on there. So, um, Does it help just, you narrow? Uh, like, could you, could you say, like, I want to be no more than three hours away from home, I want to play golf, and I want to be in a school that's medium size. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. I, it, I, mean, I mean, does does it do does that. it help sort that and say okay, it really these does. schools meet your needs? That's what yeah. I thought Naviance did. That's why yeah. I thought it was helpful. It does. It helps. Wow. I mean, not only does the, it gives the guidance like a way of um, connecting to all of their students, it also lets the students search colleges. Yeah, so I mean, I it's a it's a good engine for that. That's huge. Yeah, that's huge. So, I, Is that a software? program yeah yes. yeah the gef Web actually base. awarded the school a grant initially but the gf grants are for one year and they there's one condition that they have to be sustainable so when you you know they don't want to fund something that's going to be a one year only and we made a commitment to the gef that we would pick it up and assume it as a as an annual expense in the budget because we felt like it was going to really assist the, the students and the guidance counselors. That was the one thing I heard when I came here. The guidance process is, is too difficult. The parents were very dissatisfied. A lot of students had trouble. And when you know we, we had the opportunity to get the Naviance, I don't hear those things anymore. So I, I do think it's been a benefit. Yeah, you can also search for scholarships through that as well. Like um, I know uh, Mrs. Robinson and Mr. Umbro put just scholarship lists on there and I mean it's just a great way of con like getting the students to know the information that they need and um, also for the students just themselves to get the the information that they need so it's going to allow us to track the progress yeah. of our graduates also right. mm -hmm. that's great oh. but what about yes. training that's I mean great. that's that's I know that the majority of students I believe in Georgetown are students who will take advantage of that ability of the guidance counselors. But I wonder about students who um, aren't seeking college or aren't being, aren't actively participating in all the experiences that the high school has to offer. And are the guidance counselors, is there an awareness of who these students are and, and how to reach out to them and if they're feeling if there are students I only imagine who might feel like I don't fit in here this isn't I'm having a really bad time at this school I hate this school everybody hates me I don't belong to any of these groups like what what resources what does the school do to identify reach out to work with those students well that's a long answer but I'll try to <laughs> first we'll start with identification we we do a thing which is called the star chart and we, uh, we have uh, all of the, the students' names available to all the teachers, and the teachers come by and put a star next to their name if they know them well enough that they feel that they could write a, a college recommendation for. Uh -huh. And it's not to write a college recommendation. No. It's just an indicator of how well you know someone. Okay. And most kids have lots of stars. And the kids that, that don't have any, which I don't think – that may have had maybe one or two once in a while, but uh, or the, the people that have a few, then we reach out. That those are the red flags that we reach out to those oh, kids. That's great. And um, we uh, we counsel them. We we do a lot of career inventory stuff. There's there's a lot of uh, we hear about the college stuff all the time because we m the vast majority of our kids are going to either right. you know, seventy six percent last year went to a two year college and another. Uh, four year, four year college, four year. and, yeah, and right. uh, another fifteen percent with a two year. Yeah, we have kids that go into the military. The recruiters come in, um, and we work with uh, a, another mechanism for identification as our career inventory that we give. Okay. So, um, again, most people are, are headed toward college, but we also try to help the other kids and. 
We have a school to career program that we try to um, bridge that gap with and, and, and other things. So it's, it's kind of a long answer and you can get very specific. But it, it feels to me like because the percentage is so small, yeah. because you hear, you know, 76% of the students are going on to college, it feels like, well, those are the students, sure, we, it's our biggest group, so we've got to meet their needs by having these programs. And I just can't help but think about yeah. those little tiny percent of students. Is anybody paying attention? Yeah. Well, we try to pay attention oh, to everybody, yeah. and, and those are some of the ways that we try to identify. And it's a small school, so it's, it's it, that's a, a big school. benefit mm -hmm. to yes. us. So, um, and you have a school adjustment counselor. And, you know, I mean, there are support staff and there are guidance right. counselors, and each yeah. guidance counselor has a caseload. So, it, you know, I'm sure that they they know which kids are still struggling to kind of yeah. figure out what what's going right. to happen for them and a lot of kids graduate and they still yeah. don't know what's what's well, going to yeah, happen yeah i mean that's know? true I, I just more worry i guess my you don't want anybody to be invisible yes, yes. That's, that's a good way to put it that's yeah. I, yeah. that's yes. the thing you know <laughs> and i think if you want to be invisible at that age there's really good ways to hide yourself <laughs> sure there are. Sure <laughs> are are the guidance counselors required to take some of these outside I'm calling them continuing they, it they, for lack they of have to maintain their license they have to they have to they have to do uh, professional development like we all do yeah. sometimes on PD days um, there'll be sessions where like the let's say all the guidance and school adjustment counselors will get together and they'll work on a district-wide plan for programs for bullying prevention or they'll they'll look at the district-wide K through 12 initiatives that affect you know, all kids in our social curriculum areas, sure. you know, so they, they do that yeah. quite a bit on the yeah. PD days too. So it's not all yeah, they spent a lot of time two years ago on the bullying <coughs> curriculum and then youth risk behavior survey yeah. and yeah. looking at yeah. the results yeah. of that. So, and they don't really have time to get together often as a district. So it's a good opportunity on oh, those that's days. Yeah. Yeah, that's and great. their, their field is so broad that yeah. it's hard to, and there are so few of them, it's really not cost effective to bring in a provider to just sure. work with them. It's we're better off, you know, sending them off to various things and that's that's what we do most of the time. There's there's all kinds of conferences out there. They mm -hmm. they're going all the time. That's great. And sometimes our own people provide internal like Dr. Carr did some work on working with children with detention deficit disorder uh -huh. in the classroom and what are some strategies that, you know, we could be using. So we, we, we do some of that too and they, they can get professional development points for presenting sure. as yeah. well. That's He's great. an excellent pre presenter, very well qualified. Uh -huh. That's great. Been to some of his workshops. That's great. At, is seven, just is seventy six percent attending four year college? Is that considered a, a great statistic? Is that it's considered, considered a good statistic? I mean, when you add that to the two year colleges, you know, you end up in, in the ninety, you know, over ninety percent of the kids going on to further education. Some kids yeah. go to technical yeah. to technical schools as well, and you know, there's a there's a lot of information now about people going to the trades and the opportunities that are available to them are mm -hmm. are opening up. You know, mm -hmm. and then a lot of those two year colleges, the community colleges, those kids will go from there to yeah, state school, have, so it'll right. end up being a four year right college. Yeah. Yes, I, I think even if that, it doesn't start out um, that way. That, no, I heard that today for the first time, yeah. that stat, and I was just curious number. where it yeah. falls in the hole. Yes, and, and it varies from year to year, but it's always been, it's, at least in the six years I've been here, over 90% of the students choose to go on to further education. But that, you know, that's certainly, is, like you said, there there are also children who choose to go to the world to work, you know, and get right into the workforce, you know, or military. Well, there's mm -hmm. so much critique of higher education out there, that, yeah, and it's yeah. just growing, and yes. you know, what I'm watching, so. so right. right path yeah. for each child, the best path for the individual child is mm -hmm. okay. the goal. Great. All right, so. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> Do I hear a motion to approve the mid-year school improvement plan for Georgetown High School as presented? So moved. Second. Uh, any discussion? No discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Peter. Peter. Thank you very much. So that takes care of administrative reports, mm -hmm. superintendent's information for the committee. Brett, I just included um, just uh, some information that we received. Um, from the Merrimack Special Education Collaborative regarding a notification of an increase in their tuition. Um, and I believe their tuition was going up 5% five, 5 uh, for, for, let's see, 
for non-member for non-members. And tuition, um, we are not a member, as I understand it, of the Merrimack Special Education Collaborative, although we do have students who attend the collaborative, because that's always an option that we have. But my purpose in putting this in here for you is you might have heard us discuss, Anne's mentioned several times, that we have, we, we keep a close eye and watch on this because, you know, we have had situations in the past. We budget 4% tuition increases for this purpose mm -hmm. for, for each of our students that's in another district placement. But, you know, we have had situations in the past where the state has approved tuition increases in some schools of 24%, 32% in one year. Mm -hmm. So we just like to keep the committee abreast Absolutely. of what, you know, what we're hearing about tuition increase. So it's really, that's why it's in under superintendent's information. And so we budgeted for this increase, is that correct? We budgeted 4%. 4 and it's going up 5%? Well, as I look at it, we are a non-member, so yes, 5%. Okay. And so how do you anticipate that impacting our budget? Well, we have to take a look at the end of the day. We, we budgeted for what we understood to be the case, but we may have some changes. Sure. Before July one, maybe you know our transportation costs for a student might go down, you know maybe a student <laughs> may move, you know right. we, we don't okay. know. So we we'll, we just keep a press a breast of sure. it and okay. we'll if we have to make transfers we we right. will I'm we'll bring those right. to you. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate the heads up. You're welcome. Okay, uh, I don't think there are any financial reports. No, there aren't. All right, the subcommittee reports, budget and finance is. No report on that. No. Okay. Uh, Just to mention, maybe the FinCom meeting that's coming up. Right, the date of that. From the for the twentieth. That's the twentieth of March. Twentieth of March. I don't know if. I know Anne's planning to be there. I'm just not sure if anyone else from the committee is planning to be there. I am. Um, you're yes. planning to come, Pam? Okay. It was going to be posted as an open as a uh, meeting, so that yes. more than yes, yes, could show up. So anybody can show up in that regard. Yep. Okay. Uh, let's see governance. I don't know if there was governance. Anything. Um, yes, we <laughs> see. We just met this week, and we are going to be meeting again on Tuesday, the nineteenth, at twelve o'clock. And we have been discussing headlights policy, acceptable use policy, the Baker Adams application form, and a resolution protocol draft, Alana, <laughs> that Carol came up with, which is excellent. Yeah, we talked but about it today. That's, yes, we're looking at that and going to be Great. suggesting yep. what we need to before the, we show it to the committee. Okay. And then you'll be able to see it and Great. let us know what you think. <laughs> Great, thanks. Negotiation. Subcommittee. Who would that be? Well, let's see. So we're um, we're working with the union, um, the teachers' union, on uh, fine tuning the uh, agreement for the uh, teacher evaluation document. And I think we're very very close on that. The union actually um, is currently reviewing it in their um, administ. What, Mike? What do you call that? Your executive team? No, yeah, it's executive board. Negotiation yeah, team. negotiation team, and. Um, you know, Joe. Joe uh, asked me to look into a couple other things, so I think we've got just a little bit more work on that. But uh, then, hopefully, we're going to be able to bring that before the committee in April, and uh, then we we're establishing a, I guess you'd call it a, an advisory committee that's going to be comprised of staff as well as administration. And uh, that committee will really oversee the implementation of it. So we'll make decisions about how we're going to train people, you uh -huh. know, um, you know the, the the logistics of how to, you know, what are we going to do about district uh, district agreed upon assessments, a number of things that just need to be worked out uh, that don't need to hold up the negotiations process, but need to be done. So we'll be we'll be working on that. Um, and then in terms of the GISA. We're really close on that as well. Um, in fact, right now we're working on uh, some job descriptions. And once the job descriptions are in sh the shape we like, I think we're ready to bring it forward for ratification to both unions. Been a very positive process. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I think it's it's always good to, to hear what kinds of things the staff has as, in as interests and for them to have a chance to hear what, you know, what we have to consider. and. Um, I think the end result is 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 going to be positive okay. for everybody. That's great. Great. Excellent. 
public relations. Public relations. We have we have not had a meeting in quite a while, but we do have one planned for Friday the twenty second at eight thirty a.m. Very good. Look forward to it. Safety. We just had a safety meeting this morning, actually. <laughs> And uh, we discussed bus evacuation uh, drills, which are going very well, so that the children, the students know what to do if there was ever an emergency in, mm -hmm. on a bus. Um, and the school liaison officer position, which is also going very well. Yes, there was very, um, the, actually it was very nice to hear from the site administrators um, about, you know, their, their feelings about how having the liaison officer, even though there are three of them, they're all great, and you know what the what they've seen as the positives to that. Um, you know, I think that's very compelling when you hear it from them, as opposed to myself or the chief of police, who you know, who obviously believe in it. Um, and uh, the chief actually said that he, in his budget presentations, he's been talking with the appropriate people about the possibility of maybe uh, reinstating. You know, getting money to reinstate, you know, a single school resource officer. Um, and, you know, obviously that's in the process, and we don't have any resolution to whether that will happen or not happen. But I did offer the services, and I think they were thinking maybe Guy would be a good person uh, to talk if there was anybody, you know, who was trying to make the decision who wondered, well, what, you know, what what is the benefit to it, and is it something that we really need? And obviously I think... Uh, Talking to someone who uses the service every day is uh, always a good idea, and maybe even talking to a couple mm -hmm. of kids. Um, I don't know. Do you have anything to add on that, Cole? I mean, what's your what's your sense of how how people, you know, perceive the officer in the school? Well, I mean, they all they know is that he's just there. He's there for their safety. I mean, and they understand, especially events like um, Sandy Hook, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. They they know that it's. It's safety mm -hmm. that it, he's there. I mean, he, I don't think he's threatening. He's just there. He's, I know he stands at the lunches and he just, you know, watches the kids, and people respect him. I. The only thing is, um, you know, no one really talks to him. He just sits there, stands. I mean, you know, <laughs> it, the elementary school it's a little different, right? They get excited when they see him come. <laughs> <laughs> but um, and, I mean, just in my personal opinion, I. I'm glad that we have someone there, and I think it just it adds a level of comfort mm -hmm. to the kids that are there, just to know that you know there's someone there to protect them. So, okay. would there be anything that could help engage the student body with the police officer? Well, I I think that in the past that has happened more. I think we just reinstated it within the last month or so. Mm -hmm. I know when Jim Rodden did it, and actually when Derek Jones did it, I mean, they actually did some teaching. Um, you know, they they really, especially Jim Rodden, I think, you know, when we had when he, we had him in the district, remember we had him for multiple years. I think he was there for four, three or four anyway. Yeah, three, no, I think three. I remember him just, you know, interacting more with the students. Yeah. And I know he'd come into classes, maybe give... Yeah. And just a short presentation of what he does and why he's there should be I mean I'd love that yeah. and I know students would like that too just to know yeah. you know what's going on right well and so. Detective Rodden has been a, a certified high school teacher, teacher. for 12 yeah. years yeah. so oh really yes. yeah oh. yeah he started so he out really, as a teacher he I didn't knows know that. high school yes. students he oh, likes cool. he loves high school students so but I, I, know, know I know that and That's I think great. you know it's like anything else right forming relationships happens over time for sure. mm -hmm. and um, I think you know the, it, when it was one single individual that was there basically five days a week, mm -hmm. it's a little easier to develop those relationships. So, you know? so this person's changing. Uh, well, right now, person. right now, the, what's been funded the right now, and issue. through a negotiation with the okay. teacher with the um, union, um, they the chief has been able to work it out. So there are three officers. So there's. Um, Detective Sullivan, uh, uh, Officer Sullivan, Detective Rodden, and Officer Godot, yeah, right? Yeah. I do. And um, they they go on a rotating basis. So there's like two days, one of them is in there, next two days another one, and they rotate. So it's a little harder to form those yeah, relationships, sure. but I think, you know, the mm -hmm. goal was to provide that comfort, that sense of safety, yeah. and that is definitely something that people are reflecting that it's, it's occurring. Mm -hmm. So what would be great in the long run is if we could figure out a way to go back to the model of the school resource officer, one single individual yeah. trained mm -hmm. who can be in the schools and Maybe interacting a little friend. bit more. Yeah. 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 yeah, really, yeah. But it, okay. this is great, and we're grateful for the funding, you know, for until mm -hmm. June. 
Okay. Uh, school building committee. We met March 12th. The um, two items worth noting, the project, uh, as we're now into construction documents, is on budget. It's about $150,000 uh, off of the, the actual number, so it's, it's doing excellent as far as the budget is concerned at this point in time. And the project was voted on to have it go in front of the planning board for their um, review and approval uh, through their process. Um, it was a it was a great discussion about that, and it was good to see that uh, it was a good discussion for all. So those are the two items that probably are are highlights, and the rest is is scheduling. And we we just met what uh, I went through the scheduling before, Tuesday. Um, not that long ago. Tuesday. Tuesday. So, uh, but uh, I guess construction documents briefly highlighted. Construction documents we're in it now that phase, and they're to be completed uh, this August. And then there's one month of bidding, which is September. And then construction is supposed to begin November 2013 this year. It's amazing. Uh, and then occupying the new building, September 2015. And then for the school building committee, we have the next meeting is scheduled for April 9th, which is a Tuesday. And as far as the middle high school is concerned, <clears throat> Nothing has changed there. They're, they're still in the schematic design phase, which ends December, this December. And then it goes to the MSBA for their approval in January of 2014. Town vote comes before the town May 2014 for the middle high school. And then, assuming it's approved, go into construction documents May through December 2014, bidding. Uh, one month, two months, and construction start for the high school renovations uh, March 2015 with a substantial completion August 2015. So the completion date's actually September and August of mm -hmm. 2015 for both projects. That's going to be an interesting mm -hmm. uh, transition time for mm -hmm. the schools. Yeah. It's going to be a lot yeah. going on. And we'll, we'll have to really coordinate that yeah. really very well because there are some. There are some renovations to the middle high school that can't be done until the sixth grade vacates. Right. But there, there are other things perhaps that could be done over the course of a number, a number of years. So I, I, Rob uh, got those dates from a, from a, a document that was produced by the OPM. And I'll, I've asked Laura to put it in your packet for both of those projects for the next meeting. So you'll be able to look. It's like a Gantt chart. So and you'll be able to see it visually. Ambitious. So, that it is. those are the Sound. subcommittees. Mm -hmm. um, old business. Yep. Baker Adams criteria discussion and Carol, maybe I'll. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, the committee at their last meeting kind of remanded this back to governance. So uh, Barbie, Pam, and I, as she said, met recently. One of the things we talked, we, we reviewed the application, mm -hmm. um, and uh, tonight. You know, we weren't able to reach a resolution in terms of uh, a recommendation that would come forward to you. I did speak with um, Ann, who wasn't able to be here tonight, and um, you know, her perspective was she she would prefer not to see a lot of things changed on the document, the ap the application, because her feeling is that you know we don't want to be in a position where we're making some assumptions like you know the financial need. You know, she's a little nervous if we collect some of the information we talked about that we may be, it may drive assumptions that we don't have enough information with which to make. She was also a little bit worried about, uh, you know, prioritizing or weighting the criteria mm -hmm. because uh, she she feels that it's it would be difficult then to make sure that everybody considered the total picture. You know, if we were too focused on, like, let's say the community service slash essay, and that was fifty percent, you mm -hmm. know, and you know well, the that, application that, says the criteria will be equally. Yes, it does. But we one That's of the things way. we were talking about was we were asked to do is to take a look at whether or not there need we would want to recommend any changes. Okay. The goal is to stay within the spirit of what Baker Adams wanted. Absolutely. In the, in the reading of his will and his biography, and we just want to make absolutely sure that the application reflects that absolutely. he would be pleased with that mm -hmm. application. Absolutely. I, my, my take on the way it went last year was that it went well. 
um, and the vitality of the subjectivity of everybody, and you know, that was where the the, the life of it seemed to come from, and right. and I I thought that was pretty great. I think the problem was we only had one meeting, and it was really rushed and pinched, and that if there was one more meeting, um, that would that would I think help an awful lot. Yeah, this year we talked about we actually talked having about a that. specific meeting. Yeah. You know, where we didn't have another meeting on the other side on the other side of it. And then the other thing I think Barbie made a good point when we were talking about uh, you know it's it's numerical in order to be fair to everybody you know because we don't want it to be oh I know Cole he's a great kid he you know he's getting mm -hmm. scholars you know he's he's got his our, his application has to you know be based on merit. So we obviously number them so that there's a little bit of objectivity, and then it's numerical in terms of the point totals. Um, there was a kind of a confusion last year in in that spreadsheet. In fact, it wasn't correct the first time, mm -hmm. and uh, that it w so it was very confusing. I think when we started, if people yes. were trying to that were trying to make it numerical, <laughs> numerical to some extent, we're operating from the actual numbers, and it, so I think we can make improvements on that as well. Right, just to make sure there's no person, there's I know no I wasn't, I, I, I'm bias. sorry I didn't have any um, suggestions to submit to the committee when you were discussing this, yeah. but it occurs to me now that, is it possible for somebody, when these are submitted, to number, when, before they're photocopied for us, mm -hmm to number all the applications, to make a master list that associates a number with the name of the student, and then when we receive the application, to have the student's name removed so that we don't actually know who we're, whose application we are looking at. We are only looking at what they report. Yeah, we, we can certainly do that. Because yeah. I, I actually, I, um, I, I, I was troubled. I mean, we reviewed these. It was one of my earliest first meetings, yes, it was. perhaps, the very <laughs> first meeting. and. And there was a repeatedly, uh, people said, well, I know this family yeah. or I yeah. know this. Yeah. And that troubled me yeah. so deeply because I didn't know anyone. Mm -hmm. And so I knew I was only looking at what was being presented to me. And I think if we could do, you know, if we, if they could all be anonymous to all of us, and really you might have a suspicion mm -hmm. about who they are based on the activities or something that you see, but to have the student's name removed might make it a little bit more objective for all of us. Mm -hmm. I think that's an excellent idea. That's a, yeah, I agree. That's a good I, I, you know, I just, it takes away that whole bias. Even though you're trying to be very unbiased <laughs> when choosing, having the knowledge of the person and having even just a subconscious judgment of them can affect your ruling on absolutely. Right. No, that's you know, and we do, yes, we do want to remove that bias. You're, it also you're right lends a little credibility to people who might be concerned that we are biased or mm -hmm. why didn't mm -hmm. this happen this way and um, sure that's not a problem great I know it adds a little bit more no, I think or I'm assuming you're the one doing that <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm sorry to add right to your workload but little if you have any a little bit of white out the spreadsheet <laughs> yep. that's all so, I'm asking for so I think <laughs> having the having the having the single date to do it you know sufficient time Having you know a, some kind of a tally sheet that that everybody yes. everybody the submits same. the same way, yes. um, and that would help. And then this removal of the names. Yeah. Right. Can I just ask Cole? Did, were you able to talk to any students? And yeah, I was. I brought it up to feedback. Yeah, I brought it up to my student council, and they we read through the application. And I mean, the first sections one through three are pretty straightforward. I mean, it's just name, address, then it's family information, academic information. So we found that that really wasn't hard to grasp, as in, like, you know, exactly what's needed. Um, when it comes to section four and five, I know we talked about, and I know what you just said, um, how she doesn't want to put an emphasis on one part. Right. Um, I, From what I understood from the last meeting is she did want to, or you guys did want to put an emphasis on community service. Okay. So, um, in that case, if from Anne's recommendation um, previously, and from your recommendation previously, I brought it up like, this is what they really want community service to be, um, kind of shine through, mm -hmm. and how maybe students didn't really understand that, and I had them read through and see what jumps out at you as the most important thing, and they, I mean, it was various answers. Sometimes it was the first one on the list, like, um, 
volunteer work. That was the first thing on the list for section four um, and list in order of importance. So I was like, well, that's good because that's really what they, they were looking for. Um, but then when it comes to the essay, um, explain how your leadership, participation in social activities, academic accomplishments, and volunteer efforts. They didn't really find volunteer efforts to be the focal point of the essay, right. which is, I mean, if you guys don't want that, then that's great because you, you want it to be equally um, prioritized in, in the sense that you don't want one thing to be uh, outweigh the others if you're doing something else. But in my opinion, I found that it was definitely criteria. I didn't find it like, oh, I don't have to put in volunteer work. It's not needed. Like, I found it important from the list that was given and from the essay. So, and so did my student council. But it sounds so. like maybe you didn't, it didn't jump out at no. you and those with that volunteer and community service, which is what I thought was going to happen. And that's actually important mm -hmm. feedback because, right. because, right. you know, I think the spirit of the people, because we don't have the history. Anne has a little history because she was... She was on the. She's been on the committee for a while, and she said there have been various discussions and iterations. Like you know, should sports be considered right. a, a community activity? You know, it's not really. You know, it's not really community service. But then again, you know, some kids are are so busy with school and sports that they don't have a lot of time to do mm -hmm. things within their community. But yet they're giving back to their school by participating on a sports team. So, I think Anne's perspective is that. She, her sense is that because there was nothing specified in Baker Adams' will, that it should be about community service. We're making the judgment that he was a guy who cared about community yes. because he did so many things within mm -hmm. the community. But, you know, he just really wanted to make sure that deserving students had the opportunity to further their education. Mm -hmm. So um, if we, if it looks like what it says right now is that all of those things are important. Yeah. And it's your job as a student to sort of sort of show how well rounded you are. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, that's and that's why the community service thing isn't highlighted in well, a different way. Mm -hmm. But we we talked about how it's really important for students, we think, to read his biography and really show us your sense mm -hmm. of I mean, when I read his biography, I see community service just comes right out there. That's his mm -hmm. big I, Yeah. But I mean, I also he might not think, use those terms. But he was an but attorney. He, and I mean, he, he education. Might. So I don't. But is it possible yeah. in future years? I mean, it sounds like this is a discussion we could have right. that could after go. we award. You know, at this point, this application has gone out to the students. So we need to we award to the scholarship yeah. based on right. what the application is asking for, the way the students are understanding it, which is that anything in this list here. They can use, and it can, can and we need to weigh it equally. As that's right. For we next evaluate. year, yes, we can. We can either say the committee believes that you know. We, we can, can say, reward it. We can reward it just to say, read Baker Adams' biography, and what do you believe he would value in what you have done? How would you be worthy? You know. We could say it that way, or we could say we we understand Baker Adams from his biography to be someone who valued community service. You know how I think just the prompt. It's how we ask for yes. the how we ask for it. We could change. And that's what we and did. We could get rid of the subject of agreement problem. No. <laughs> but honestly, <laughs> but honestly, <laughs> education was important to him too because yeah. if you see mm -hmm. here, yes. you know, he says it was a high priority, and it sounded like financial need was as well because he was willing to give uh, breaks to, to people on some of the things that he did well, with the community. Well, so crafting I, I, that prompt is a whole, I mean, that's, well, mm -hmm. and those are those that's, two quarters of what's important. Oh, that's, we can pull the English department in because they I think it's I'd, available in this guidance office, but I don't know that any of the scholarship things are, are have been distributed. Okay. Have I, Peter, have the, the scholarship things been distributed yet? They're, they're, when do they get? When does, does, I'm pretty Baker sure Adams when everyone gets been, them. Distributed yet? We changed. We, we try to move the um, the timeline up. So uh, normally not until for about a month, but I'm not sure what the new timeline is. So like sometime if in I'm April. Not, if I'm not mistaken, it is April 1st. It That's when April we get 1st. all that of the scholarships. Right, cool. That's what okay. I understand from Good. the guidance department. That does but, sound right. Good. Um, so I mean, if you wanted to make an adjustment now, I'm pretty sure you're still able to. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, okay. Good. But the when I read Baker Adams' scholarship, that's exactly what I got from it. He was a community man. He really right. yeah. emphasized he putting your time and effort into the community. But 
I know as a student who has a lot of other things to do, they're not always going to read the biography. They're just going to go straight to, um, all right, what do I need to do? All right, fill this out. Fill it, okay. Well, yep, unless it says, when it says, read Baker Adams' biography. <laughs> yeah, and exactly. And based on your, we could, you can instruct the students to do mm -hmm. that. That's right. And That's so right. it would give, it would make it more clear that you want it based on what Baker Adams wants. And if they, if they read it, they will get a more focused interpretation. Like you're like within all the students, it'll be a more, more focused um, interpretation of what he wants instead of kids who don't read it and just kind of write about okay leadership. Yeah, okay. Um, so leadership, participation, in social activities, academic academic accomplishments, and volunteer efforts. They might not put the volunteer effort as a big part. They might be like, yeah, so I did some community service over the summer. Well, and that's the only time they really mention it. So putting that read the biography um, um, and, you know. Write an essay explaining how you would be deserving yes. in Baker Adams' eyes. Mm -hmm. I, I, think the, I think the tricky thing about this is um, when this was done, Donnie Cudmore did a lot of work on this. Um, you know, when the, when the money became available, he went and he spoke to community members and family and friends, and he put this together. So it's difficult for us because we we didn't participate in that process. We didn't talk to anybody. So we would be supposing, based on what we're reading that someone else wrote, what Baker Adams cared about. Yes. That's why I'm I'm a little reluctant to change the scope of this because it was developed by people who really did some solid research on you know what what he valued so you know whether we weighed it differently or not makes sense to me but I would hate to see us not keep the same criteria because again it was developed as a result of some research that was was done um, clarifying the prompt and you know doing that kind of stuff that makes sense to me but I, I think the criteria should you know should be considered mm -hmm. because we may have somebody who who is uh, who worked really hard academically and if the focus is on community service but because of their 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 work in their in their school but not necessarily within their community they might not fare as well you know well, what i mean so i i think i like the, the openness the, of the options but, i mean I, i'm glad that we're just re-evaluating and, and looking at it again with fresh eyes i mean i, I agree the original work that was done on this is certainly excellent and done by people who put a lot of hard time and effort into mm -hmm. it um, but just to, you know based on the on the responses that we've seen and I've only had one year experience with this but you know maybe over the years what when you see you know the results the essays that students are writing just think about is is this what Baker Adams had in mind I, just and continue, again, I, I don't know Baker to. Adams so I don't know that right. I think if we go back though just to keep a context because I know we don't want to spend a lot of time on this mm -hmm. discussion the reason we're having this discussion is because there were some things about the process last year that didn't work. Not necessarily the application didn't work. There were things about the process that didn't yes. work. So that's what I, I think our, our reason for bringing it forward and bringing it up was to think about is is it is the problem that we didn't know what the criteria was? Is the problem that it should have been weighted differently? Or is it that we didn't have enough time? That it was a brand new committee, most of which yes. had never been through the process before. The, the data was skewed or, or incorrect at best. You know, I'm wondering if it does make sense for us this year to, to try this again. Yes. And see if the changes we're making to the process iron some of these things Absolutely. out. Rather than well, uh, embracing it as so, like a well, massive change well, we need I, to do right now. I, I think another meeting well, is going to make a big difference. I, I would just like to take this back to, to <coughs> governance because I... Um, just felt like in, in the application, particularly in the financial section, there was very inconsistent information. And That's, if I mean it's it's all confidential. I mean it all gets shredded afterwards. It's you know, it's none of our business except that we're supposed to be evaluating this. And well, if the information is different I'm happy to discuss it, but I, I think it, um, I wish Anne were here because I think Anne makes she was very clear and persuasive to me as to why you wouldn't want to know some of the information that we were asking for because there are some assumptions that you can make consistent when information you, and th that's the consistent information and she said that's gone back and forth you know we had George Moker we had uh, and other financial people on it 
and they said based on their recommendations this is the essential information because if you have too much information that we don't really have all of the information the question it is, does lead you I, into I do think the question is how does the committee given this information let's just I, I will, I'm happy to go forward with the assumption that this is all the information we need this is the exact amount of information we need how do we weight it that's right that's the question. Well, and what we need this a says formula. is you're weighting it equally. No, okay. no, 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 no. I, you, I don't think you understand what I mean. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six lines of information here that yeah. we're asking for in regard to financial information. Yeah. So, for instance, we had. Let's just. I'll throw some numbers out. Last year, we might have had a student whose annual tuition for their first institution was going to be fifty thousand dollars a year, mm -hmm. and another student whose tuition for their first choice institution was going to be eighty thousand. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then. We got the anticipated aid, anticipated scholarships. So then we have, we, we looked at what their unmet financial obligation, mm -hmm. and do we decide that we give the greatest weight? This was a question we had last year. Does the greatest weight go to the student with whose number there is the highest? Mm -hmm. Or does it go to the student who, you know, and this is where knowing the students got really uncomfortable for mm -hmm. me, that some people knew, oh, well, this student's unmet financial obligation is going to be $50,000, but they don't have any siblings, and we know the, got, the dad's got a really good job, and it's not going to be a problem for them. That was the kind of conversations we were having here, versus a student who this, their unmet financial obligation is maybe only $5,000, but because of what they wrote in their essay, we were able to discern that that $5,000 was going to present a tremendous hardship to the family. <coughs> and so we were stuck. Well, this person is going to pay $50,000 out of pocket, but oh, because we know the family, we, we think they can afford it. This person has told us they've got siblings with medical needs that are driving their family into poverty and an unemployed father. And even though their unmet need is $5,000, if this student doesn't get that $5,000 from someplace, they may just have to kiss college goodbye. We were having those kinds of conversations. Hmm. We and, didn't know. And, and the we problem didn't have is, a policy. even if you had more information, you're still not going to know. It throws, just throws more well, things we in. Can, I, I'm saying we can set, can we set, perhaps, some guidelines for how, if, if we have five sections here that we're considering, so let's say each section is going to be worth 10 points, okay? And, and, and the overall, so a student could earn potentially 50 points for a perfect application, we'll say. And we're going to give money to all the students who, who we score, say, between 45 and 50. We're going to divide up that money somehow. Let's say we had a formula like that. So 10 points for the essay, kind of easy to come up with scoring. 10 points for community information. Hmm, is it going to be like one point for being involved in a sport? but three See, points for you, being in the key club. How that. are we going to do that? You can't do that. And that's why the pro that's why I want you to see what the process, how the process works again, because it's never been a problem in the past. Last year, for whatever reason, the process didn't work smoothly. So again, we don't know which variable or which variables was the reason for that. What, in the, what usually happens, I, I've seen it with different committee members, some people will set up a very numerical system for themselves, right. and others will not. But somehow... Right. Somehow, at the end of the day, the people who emerge as the 10 top kids that get the total points ended up being the top kids that everybody agreed on. They may not have agreed which place they sure. fell in the top 10. But last year, but we didn't, that didn't happen. That and didn't you're saying happen. that was an anomaly I, based on that class. It's an, in my six years here, okay. it's an anomaly. Okay. I don't know whether, it, again, I went through the factors it could be. So I guess what I'm lobbying for is that perhaps we try it one more year. I Try see, to clean up the variables, saying. and then, then because you'll have been through it more than one year, then you might be able to, okay. after the fact, say, let's reflect on this. You know, what process did people use? You know, do we want to have something okay. a little more standardized? Right. I mean, oh, you know, when pe context I'm, is important I'm, when you I'm try it a couple of yeah, times, absolutely. right? Absolutely. But I do think, a, that makes sense. you know, I'm, that and makes I'm glad sense, that yeah. everyone's in agreement that removing the applicant's name. Yeah, I think that, that might make another the that might be another variable. It, the better that sounds. Yes. <laughs> so let's do good. that. Let's do that. And there's numerous <laughs> places. It's not just the name, yeah. but there's the name of the father and the name of the mother, like all of that. Any names in the essay, that all has to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can do that. 
I think that, yeah, yeah. that so, would I mean, that's what I would suggest you think about is let's, <laughs> let's go for it. Let's check the process out again. And then let's reflect right after the process because you will all have gone through it now two Indeed. times. Well, we'll have a new person <coughs> at the point that we're doing that's this. That's true. You, we'll so have you'll a have a new one committee member. But you won't have the majority of people. You'll have at least been through it. Yes. Two times and maybe even three. Okay. You know, actually, no, just two at one and two. Right. So you've been, th you've all been through it. W we've been once. through it once. All been through it once. And Rob, you've been through it twice. Right. And Barbie will have been through it twice. Correct. So this and, will be the third time. For and I, and okay. I would say that the first time I went through it, it, it was definitely smoother. Okay. It, interesting. Um, okay. Well, good. Let's. I mean, if you, and, and then now, so we don't need to go back to governance. Although we can certainly. I just talk have one more it. question. It, I'm sorry to be a, like so anal no, about this. That's right. Is this a document that's on your computer somewhere, Laura? That you, there is a there is a um, subject verb agreement error in the prompt. So just send us a little note about okay. that. Okay. <laughs> So we want graduates. Kind of, if we're asking the children to be, it's yes. to be uh, grammatically correct, and we ought to we be. should be as well. I agree. With <laughs> okay, wonderful. Okay. No vote required on that. No vote okay, required. Great. So then we will move on to. Thank you, Paul, for checking on that. I appreciate yeah, that. Of course. Definitely um, feedback. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you know that I could help or just assist <laughs> in any way because, and when it comes down to it, it's the students. That's it's right. And it, it is important. Mm -hmm. We agree. New business, acceptance of pearly okay. donation. So the Georgetown PTA has generously donated $132 to the Pearly School as a result of a recent author's book sale. And we have, do we hear a motion to accept the $132 PTA donation with gratitude as presented? And are we, do we name who these are from? Um, sometimes we do. Clear. Sometimes they don't want us to, um, don't. so we don't. Um, was this a was this an anonymous one or? This is just from the PTA. Okay, from the PTA. That's PTA, but the other one. Coming, okay. So the signature probably represents the treasurer. Mm -hmm. So the motion is to accept. I uh, need a motion to accept the hundred and thirty-two dollar PTA donation. So moved. Second. Any discussion? <laughs> no discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, PTA. Thank you, yes. PTA. <laughs> and we have a second reading of the International Student Exchange Policy. And we will want to vote on this. And that and is a vote, correct. So everybody had that in the packet from before. Uh, so we're looking for a motion to approve the new policy, file JS, International Student Exchange Policy as presented. So moved. Second. Can I ask a question before I second? Or second yes. and then discussion. Well, yeah. <laughs> second and then discussion. Hey, any discussion? So if I, as a member of the Georgetown community, am considering hosting an international student, um, exchange student, before I move forward with my intention, I need to check with the schools. Is that the intention here? Or is there? do most international exchange programs have a... Uh, a vehicle for ensuring that there will be a place in the public school before they send you that student? Um, that well, it depends on the organization. It depends on the organization. Peter's had a little experience with this um, recently, and usually our experience has been <coughs> with an organization. Okay. So they will, um, they have a process. Uh, they will uh, come and check and see whether or not there's availability of spots. Okay. Uh, they will get the host family, they will oversee the process, they will con connect with the school. And then we ha we had a situation where um, there was not an organization we were familiar with okay. um, that wanted to do this. So we contacted actually our attorney just to make sure that, because we didn't have a policy on it, okay. just to see you know what's, what's in everybody's best interest here. Um, and as a result, she get, put us in the in the direction of a of a model policy, which we have taken and done some adapting to. Um, but you know, we think it is important to have guidelines. So oh, I agree. You know, I just want to make sure that I, I, this is probably something. I'm glad to know this because it's my family's intention at some we, point we, to host we, an we, international we, exchange we student. We want them so to go want... through an agency. Okay. As opposed to someone saying, well, you know, I think I, I want to go and find a, a French student to come right, live in. Right. We, we would like them to go through an agency, and then we'd like to have this set of guidelines followed. Okay. And we'll do everything we can to accommodate. Um, but 
you know that there are there do, does need to be some agreement or understanding of you know we want the child to succeed absolutely right absolutely. so so we don't want to be in a situation where you know they speak nothing of the language they're socially having difficulty or they've had issues with the law in their home country yes right I we, mean, we don't know, want I that mean, i mean i hate to, I hate to you know <laughs> say that but, for my you know um most of the time but we but through these um through these agencies and we have found yes. that they've fully vet those kind of things yes, and, absolutely um yes. you know and 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 we love having exchange students they, they enrich the community overall i mean there was one student that came in and she was on the cross-country team i went to the cross-country banquet and it was just she just fit mm -hmm. so right in and you know just it was it was awesome this is yeah. jen it's pretty cool. yeah, yeah. It was, on, on both sides of it and peter you've had really good experiences with foreign exchange students right always yeah, yeah. so it's it's something we we like to encourage but we also just want to make sure we do have, have some guidelines policy. sure because we have had more inquiries than it that more have been popping up i think well in it's the just last good to know years. i think i haven't begun the exploration of the process but then i see there's a possible i hadn't probably thought it through well enough to think oh gosh just assume they would go to Georgetown Public School as my kid for a year, you know. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but there, so. there does need to be. Would we like yes, to have these guidelines absolutely. put in place, okay. and then there won't be a lot of confusion. That's great. It's very reassuring, actually, to know there's. Okay. Uh, seeing no more discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All set. And we do not have executive we do not. session. We do not. Thank you all for coming. Appreciate, appreciate <laughs> yes, thank it. You. Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Uh, this meeting, motion to adjourn? Yes. Second? Yes, aye. <laughs> second or second? Any discussion, sorry. no discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned. Good night, everyone.